Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and welcome to Enough Troubleshooting. Today's episode is about one icon. The icon you are able to see here. You see this red icon? This red icon means that your magnetometer is not working. Why a magnetometer is not working? There are at least, <sighs> how to tell it? few reasons for it and uh, starting from Chinese uh, cloners uh, ending up on a crappy bus. But let's go back to the basics. The basic problem with Honeywell 5883 magnetometer that it's most mostly used magnetometer around is that probably it's one of the mostly cloned, crappy cloned, very crappy cloned uh, electronic uh, circuits ever. For okay, not, not not only that, it's no longer manufactured by Honeywell. Honeywell stopped doing this magnetometer some time ago. So every time you are buying a compass or just a magnetometer, you are probably buying a clone. Now we have a question: How good the clone is? No idea. No idea. Half. Let's say half of the problems connected with uh, HMC uh, 5883 magnetometer is strictly because the clone of this device is <sighs> crappy. The cheapest possible electronics ever. In this case, the chances of fixing that are rather, yeah, there are some chances of that, but this is not original uh, electronics. Not only that, lately, Chinese uh, manufacturers started to sell completely different device. Okay, maybe not completely different, slightly different device with different register, which is not Honeywell AMC 5883, named as 5883 crazy right this is not exactly the same it's not uh, bit by bit compatible and if the software don't know how to differentiate between them you won't end up uh, in the problem with a problem i have slightly learned how to use both hmc 5883 and original clones as well as this QMC DM something 5883 that's not really HMC okay never mind latest version of INAF should support both good quality magnetometers both original AMC and this DM something I, I know I'm not I don't even remember the exact name but that's 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 only half of the story so half of the problems poor quality magnetometer sometimes you will be able to do something with this sometimes you don't uh, second half of the story is the bus that used to connect magnetometers to the flight controller it's called i2c and it stands the worst bus ever why let me show you why on the outside i2c bus looks pretty simple you have flight controller you have for example magnetometer and four lines VCC, SCL, SDA and GND. This is for ground, this is for supply voltage, uh, clock line and data line. You connect them with each other, everything works fine. But this is not exactly how it works in the inside. On the inside you have to realize that I2C devices are hmm, handicapped? Is that the correct word? Okay, they are handicapped. The port over here cannot decide if the, the level of the electricity will be high or low. No, 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 it's not like that. The high level is just provided by the electri electric bus itself. Only when one of the devices wants to pull the line down, it shortcuts it to ground. This is why inside, inside of the bus somewhere, we have something called the pull up, pull up, not pull up, I have to learn that, pull up resistors. They are always connected between the line, SCL and SDA, and VCC. So, when one of the devices wants to put the line high, it just does nothing. If it wants to pull it down, it connects to ground, it's working, in theory. 
in theory, but only in theory, because the value of the resistor, the resistance of those pull-ups, determines how fast the bus can change states. Can it go high? Can it go can it go low? Not only that, the length of the wire, the quality of the wire, quality of electronics also influences how fast the AC, AC, I, IC2, I2C can really, really work. And now we go, go to the final flaw of I2C. Those pull-ups have to be installed somewhere. Sometimes they are installed here on the FC side. Sometimes they are installed on the slave device, in this case magnetometer. Sometimes they are in both places. And sometimes they might not be there because nobody really put them there. There are no pull-ups on the magnetometer. There are no pull-ups or very weak pull-ups on the flight controller and the bus is just not working. Not only that, the other problem is that if you want bus to fast to run fast, the pull-ups have to have the low value. Low value, what I mean by the low value, the resistance of the pull-ups on both SCL and SDA should be around, depending on the speed of the bus. For example, when you want, uh, by default, INAF uses 400 kilohertz uh, I2C speed, then the pull-ups should have around two kilo ohms. Maybe even five, five it will work pretty nicely. Uh, slower the bus, for example, for, let me check the numbers, for 100, 100 kilohertz, you can go with uh, 10 kilo ohms pull-ups. Now, how, how strong the pull-ups on the flight controller are? Depends on the flight controller itself. Uh, if this is software I to see, then probably the full up pull ups are very, very high resistance, like let's like say 20 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, 20 kilo ohms, or maybe 10 kilo ohms, maybe around 5 kilo ohms. But do we have pull up on the magnetometer? Don't we have a pull up on the magnetometer? You don't really know. You might measure this by measuring resistance between line and the v uh, VCC, but the first thing, no, the second, the first, never mind. One of the most important things when having problems with anything connected via the ITC bus is to add stronger pull-ups. How to do it? Just take a resistor, let's say five kilo ohms. Yeah, five kilo ohms should be, should be fine, small resistors, and solder them between SDA and VCC and SCL and VCC. Just add those resistors somewhere to the circuitry. It can be on the FC side, it can be on the magnetometer side, it can be part of the wire connecting those two. It's not really matter. Just add 5 kilo ohm uh, resistors uh, as uh, external pull-ups and see what happens. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it's not helping, but it's really worth to try. And if you like living on the edge, make the resistors even lower. 2 kilo ohms should work fine. Um, the minimum resistance uh, for the pull-ups on the um, I2C is something around, let's say in our case, even slightly less than 1 kilo ohm. So, so you should be fine. If there are no pull-ups or there are weak pull-ups already, adding 2 kilo ohm uh, resistors uh, to the line will not make, do, make any harm. So give it a try. Maybe it will help. If this did not help, there is one more thing you can try. You can lower the speed of I2C bus inside of the INAV, since uh, last few months INAV allows for this functionality to set the higher or lower uh, I2C speed comparing to the default 400 kilohertz. How to do it? Simple. Just let's start with configurator. Start on a regular basis, just open configurator go to CLI tab and type get I2C and there will be a setting called I2C speed. As you can see, the default value is uh, 400 kilohertz. Good quality wires, good quality magnetometer, 
normal hardware I2C and everything should be working fine. If it's not working fine, then do the following. Set I2C speed equals 100 khz, press enter and press save. What we did now is we inf oh sorry, the device is rebooting. We inform the flight controller to use lower I2C speed. What does it give us? Um, it just allows for the bigger tolerance for the for the hardware on the I2C because uh, the lower the speed, the less requirement for timings on the wires, the less requirements on the value of the pull-ups, the less requirements on the slave device to to be fast enough to. Uh, reply to the request of the of the master in this case the flight controller so there's a bigger chance that the weak quality hardware in form of magnetometer in this case will work properly but uh, if none of those two solutions i mean adding adding stronger pull-ups and lowering the i2c uh, speed did not help i'm sorry but you just have to use different uh, magnetometer um, there are just cases when the, the hardware from China is not working, period, and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. So uh, with this only slightly optimistic, uh, <laughs> slightly, no, kind of optimistic, good thing those are not very expensive things right now. So with this optimistic thought, see you next time. Ciao.